So thank you for all for sticking around. It is 5 o'clock. It has been a long day. Uh, hopefully you have all learned and had as much fun as I have. Um, today we're going to learn about making the most of your mailing list. Uh, my name is Corey Moss. I live in a little town called Saugerties, New York, so a few hours west of here. As I just said, it's a very uh, boring drive, but relatively easy. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, I have been building websites since uh, the mid to late 90s, so I've been around doing this for, for quite a while. Um, and I've been messing around with WordPress since uh, 2009, so uh, also a pretty, pretty long time. I'm uh, still doing contract work to pay the bills, and, uh, but trying to build a uh, plug-in into a business. Uh, is my main plug-in is called Kanban Boards for WordPress. And uh, if you don't know what a Kanban board is, uh, Google it or come ask me afterwards. But if you're looking for a project management solution, uh, give it a try. I'll say this again later, but uh, we can start already. If you ever want to ask me a question, I'm happy to talk about entrepreneurship or WordPress or um, yo-yoing. I'm good at yo-yoing, uh, which is sort of weird, but uh, I, I started in the eighth grade, so uh, there's some things you just don't forget. Um, send me an email, uh, or you can find me on Twitter at Corey Moss. So goals for our chat today. I'm going to talk a bit about the benefits of email and email marketing. I'm going to talk about mailing list services that you might use to handle your, your mailing list. Talk about how people join your mailing list, how to get people to join your mailing list, and then how to get people to actually read your email assuming they've joined your mailing list and, uh, and then you're able to send them some emails. So starting with the benefits of, of email, I'm going to read some stats to you. Um, if they're not absolutely fascinating to you, they'll be over fairly quickly here. Um, there's simply more email, right? Um, Three billion users uh, of email worldwide by 2019. Um, and the last stat I saw said that, I think it's mostly in America, um, almost everybody has uh, close to two accounts. Well, obviously, everybody either has two accounts or, or, or one account or less. But anyway, per user, per American, uh, there's 1.8 accounts per person. Um, email is viewed more. 90% uh, of Americans check email at least once daily. Most of us check it every 10 minutes. Um, and 60% of the time, email is checked on mobile. Um, which is just an interesting stat, and I'll come back to that a little later. Email is viewed longer, uh, so compared to uh, social media, social media marketing, um, the average reading time of an email is 11 seconds, um, which, as you can imagine, compared to a tweet, which is often scrolled by instantaneously. And uh, email is clicked on more, so this is obviously talking more about um, email marketing, but an open rate for marketing emails is around 25%, uh, and click-through rates is around 4%, versus uh, anything on social, which is still usually less than 1%. Um, and so getting into the specific benefits of email marketing, um, some of these are facts, some of these are a little subjective. Uh, I'll try to uh, add my disclaimer when it's subjective. Uh, the first one here is, is one of the reasons why I think email marketing is so successful um, is that it's uh, specifically is protected. People tend to protect their inboxes, but so the inverse is true in that if they sign up for your mailing list, um, the likelihood that they will engage with your email marketing is pretty high because they've let you in. So if you're a nerd like me and you know about vampires, um, there's an old rule that vampires aren't allowed to come into your house uh, until you invite them in, um, and then all sorts of havoc, uh, they can wreak all sorts of havoc on you, but you have to let them in. Um, email is targeted, so most people will not sign up for newsletters, uh, email lists that they aren't interested in, right? So you have the opportunity of of targeting your audience, um, you're probably sending them content that they are interested in. 
Um, and that makes it a lot easier to market to them. Um, and targeted segmented campaigns uh, have an open rate that, that is 14% uh, higher than, um, than sort of you know, broad marketing, broad strokes marketing. So it's, it's their big advantages. Uh, email marketing is cheap compared to buying billboards or hiring blimps. Um, or printing off endless t-shirts and giving them out at work camps and then hoping that people don't just need t-shirts, um, that they actually like your product. Um, no offense to the folks printing t-shirts, I love them. Um, and then uh, email, here's another subjective thing, but it's something that I've noticed is, that, at least in myself, is that email, uh, email feels productive, right? So even if you uh, receive a newsletter in your inbox uh, that you know is marketing, it still feels productive somehow that, you know, to, to skim through, to feel like you're, you're learning about new products, here's new tools that you might use in your professional life, uh, and, then, and then to delete that email um, feels like you're checking something off. So, um, to me, I think that it's, it's just one of those little subtle um, psychology tricks that, um, that makes email marketing so, uh, so effective. So now, uh, assuming I've convinced you that email marketing is the way to go, um, here are some uh, mailing list services um, and, and things that you might look for in these services, right? So there, there are a lot of different companies out there. Some of the bigger ones are MailChimp, Campaign Monitor, Constant Contact. Um, and then there's also the, the general functionality, which we'll talk about in a sec, um, is also now baked into a lot of tools. It used to be, like I said, I started back in the 90s, um, the early email marketing um, tools were, were had, had a few purposes um, and a few features, whereas now a lot of those features uh, bleed over into other products, um, or other products now uh, contain some of that same functionality. Um, so CRM tools, sales tools, um, and, auto and email automation tools, um, some of those names are Infusionsoft, um, Drip is a great one, and then I use a, uh, a product called Active Campaign that again combines a lot of this functionality. So features that you want to look at. Well, obviously, number one, email deliverability, um, and this is the huge advantage of using a service uh, that sends emails for you instead of you just BCCing a hundred people. Um, is uh, this thing called uh, whitelisting, which I won't get into, but basically it. Um, they can't guarantee that your email is going to be delivered, but the, the likelihood that it doesn't end up in a spam folder is a lot higher. Um, and then past that, things like list management, so when people subscribe to your mailing list, um, they're also able to unsubscribe, they're able to update their email accounts, that kind of thing. Um, and then you get into some of the extras, which are things like um, analytics and reporting. You want to know how effective your emails are. You want to know how many people read your email, how many people clicked on your uh, well-worded call to action that you're selling your, you know, your widget, whatever it is. Um, and then and conversions, so kind of combining those two numbers, which is you know, how many people viewed the email versus how many people um, actually clicked. Um, things like segmentation, which we'll get to a, uh, a little bit more later, but um, starting to break down your users, tag your users, so did this person sign up on my homepage or did they sign up after clicking on a tweet? Um, and are they interested in you know, my blue widgets or my red widgets? Because that lets you, uh, you know, um, target them a little bit differently. Um, depending on how you're going to use your emails, um, integrations can be important. Um, and since we are at a WordPress conference, I'll talk a little about, bit about WordPress now and later. Um, but specifically, if you're, if you're looking for um, integrating your uh, email marketing with uh, your WordPress site, then obviously integration is, integrations are, are going to be important. Um, and then the last thing to look for, which a lot of people don't think about uh, in the beginning, but you will definitely run into if you um, keep going with email marketing, is importing and exporting. Um, uh, over time, I've signed up for and then abandoned uh, probably at least half a dozen uh, email marketing tools. They come and go, companies close, they get acquired, I outgrow them, that kind of thing. And so you want to know that you can export your email list and then import it into the new tool, whichever one you might choose. 
uh, extra features, sort of the, the icing on the cake, if you will. Um, CRM, so um, managing relationships with uh, your users or your customers, email addresses, shipping addresses, uh, the names of their wives, if you're into that kind of market networking, um, or husbands, sorry. Um, sales tracking is another feature set that you might see. Um, so knowing whether your customers or, or the, the people who are on your mailing list bought products or didn't buy products, again, lets you target them differently. Uh, drip campaigns, which is um, a newer feature or a newer uh, technique that's, that's caught on in the last few years, which is um, even if you don't know it by this name, uh, you probably have experienced it. You go to a website and they say, give, give me your email address and I will send you a, an email course over the next seven days uh, teaching you how to do X, Y, and Z. That's a drip campaign where they drip emails to you over time. Automation, uh, which is the same sort of thing in segmentation, and starts to integrate into your website of, okay, they visited this website or this web page and this web page, so they must be interested in, in this type of product rather than this type of product, and maybe I'll tag them a certain way and, and then I can target them. Um, and then support is the other thing that I'm starting to see overlap with some of, some of these, um, these um, web apps or, or SaaS apps or products. Um, where you can basically manage if, if you've got a software product like I do, for example, and people are emailing in, hey, it broke or whatever, um, there's ways to integrate that into your newsletter or, or you can manage them uh, overlapping in, with the same tools. So how to get people, or excuse me, how people actually will join your mailing list. This is, this is uh, technically speaking. Um, so basically, Talking about a WordPress site, assuming that you've got a WordPress site, um, you can put forms uh, on your, you know, on your various pages, and this is where they might sign up. And you might have some co copy that says, you know, if you join my newsletter, then I will teach you all sorts of wonderful, and amazing things. Um, WordPress loves its widgets, so you can have uh, widgets where people can sign up. And then um, something that I that's become very popular in the last few years are modals, pop-ups, pop-overs, whatever you want to call them. But basically, we've all seen it where you're reading a blog post and after a few seconds, of a, a little window you know opens up and says, join my mailing list and I will send you more great content like this. So how do you get all of these things onto your WordPress website? Um, well, a lot of the uh, email marketing tools that you might use have built-in form generators. Um, a lot of them also now have WordPress plugins. So if you, for example, sign up with Mailchimp, and then you go into into the plugin directory and Google or search for Mailchimp, um, you know there's a dedicated plugin that you can just install, and then it, it'll let you add forms to your content, that kind of thing. Um, Sort of the inverse of that, if you've already got a Gravity Forms or a Ninja Forms form builder built into your, or, or that you're using on your WordPress site, they all have add-ons now, so they will generate a form for you, and so if somebody signs up, it will automatically add them to your active campaign or MailChimp. Uh, and then there are third-party services like SumoMe, Optin Monster, and then there's one that I use called Get Site Control where you add a little bit of uh, JavaScript to your website and it'll add forms or popovers for you. So now let's say you've got a form on your website. How do you actually get people to join your mailing list? What it comes down to is giving them something in exchange for their email address. Again, thinking about the, the vampire rule, basically you want some way to convince people to let you into their house so that you can suck their blood. This is a ter terrible analogy. Maybe I should think of one. Um, but these are often called lead magnets or content upgrades. And we'll go into a little bit of, of each kind here. But basically broken down more or less into three groups where you've got guides, reports, cheat sheets, that kind of thing. Um, you've got an actual asset that you give them, so a download, a free trial. Um, and then for more high touch, generally for higher price point services, you've got training or assets, so, or assessments, excuse me, so we'll get into that. So what are some guides, reports, cheat sheets? Um, again, talking about drip campaigns, um, content that you might give them over 
uh, over a week delivered, you know, in, in a chapter a day, that kind of thing. Uh, a downloadable PDF, um, restricted content, I'll talk about in a second, um, or infographics, so maybe it's just a, a beautiful graphic that tells them the 10 best tips and tricks for whatever. Um, these are all things that basically you can say, hey, sign up now and I will send you my awesome infographic that will teach you how to, you know, uh, increase your SEO, whatever it might be. Um, a couple of uh, ways to generate these things is to think about, you know, you and your business, and your day-to-day. -day. Um, what are assets that you might be generating already? So, like, if you've got a friend uh, who maybe is not as uh, tech-savvy as you are, because all of us are, of course, web WordPress experts, um, and they say, hey, how do I increase the SEO on my website? You might shoot them an email that says, well, you could try this, you could try this, try this. Well, that right there might be a great block of content that you can convert into a PDF that you could then offer as a free download in exchange for somebody joining your newsletter. Um, as far as uh, restricted content, a really neat trick is, you know, you can create a page on your website, but if you don't link to it anywhere, nobody really knows that it's there. Um, so it's sort of a, a, a secret hidden page, and you can tell people, hey, if you sign up for my newsletter, then I will give you this great content, and you can just redirect them to that page that has that content on it. So it's really easy, it's, content, it's functionality that's built into WordPress, and it's a great way to, to deliver that. And then a, a trick that I like using for generating things like infographics, uh, if you are not a, a graphic designer um, and, and want Obviously, you want your infographic to look uh, attractive. I love a website called Fiverr, spelled with two R's, that you can get people to design things for you. You can basically get anybody to do anything for five bucks on Fiverr. That's kind of the idea. Um, but it's great for, for services like this, where you will hire somebody for five or 20 bucks and say, here's the content, can you make it look pretty? And they'll do it for you. You can also hire people to do research if you want to generate, like, um, something a little more in-depth, that kind of thing. So the next group of uh, assets you might give away, something downloadable, a free trial, so if you are a musician and you're trying to promote yourself, maybe give away a free song, you know, download a copy of my new single in exchange for your email address, then you can market them and sell them the rest of the album, maybe. Um, if you're an author, give away the first chapter. Um, and for me, if, or if you're like me and you're selling a software product, then you can give away a, a trial license. Hey, try our software for free for 14 days in exchange for your email address. And the trick here is, again, WordPress being one of the wonderful platform that we know it is, lets you uh, host these files for free and easily upload it to your media folder, and then you can just link to it there. And then the last category of giveaways, again, like I said, is generally better for uh, it's, it's a little more high touch, and so time being money, it's a little better for high price point services and products. Um, but it, it has other extra benefits, like it's great for customer research. Um, so things like phone calls, Skype calls, you can obviously do this remotely. Um, so you do videos, you do live tutorials, live webinars, and, and online courses. So basically what you're doing here is saying, uh, I will do a website assessment for you in exchange for an email address. I will, you know, teach you my 10 best tips and tricks for, I don't know, selling spices to rock stars, whatever it is. Um, but again, usually because time is money, it's, it's something that you want to know that you're, you're likely to get uh, $10,000 out of marketing to them rather than, uh, you know, 12 bucks a month or whatever it might be. Um, a, a good way here that I've seen for people who, again, you, you want to uh, limit access to you, uh, you know, to avoid people who are just trying to kick the tires, um, is to add actually more fields to your sign-up form. So it's not just give me your email address, but um, how many rock stars do you know, or whatever it might be. So uh, you can use the form basically to pre-qualify people before letting them join your newsletter so that you, you kind of know that they're worth more. So now you've got them on your mailing list. How do you get them to actually read your email? So again, I'm gonna list off some stats here, but I promise they're worthwhile. Um, obviously, start with great content. But what that means is 
generally not just high sales, buy, buy, buy my stuff, um, but you want to teach people things, you want to add value, that can also be um, entertainment, it doesn't have to just be education. Um, and then also, statistically, being personable tends to do better than just, you know, we are a, a company and we are trying to sell something to you, so saying, hey there, how's it going, and, and talking in the first person, this is what, or, was it first person plural, we? Or whatever, whatever that is, she's nodding, yes! I, I know grammar stuff. Um, so saying we and I rather than just you know, we as a company and you as the lowly customer um, all will lead to more conversions. Um, KISS, keep it simple. Um, plain text or emails that look like plain text actually perform 25% better. So the days of the newsletters where you have two sidebars and many articles and that kind of thing uh, are fading. Now obviously the disclaimer there is it depends on your industry. There are certain industries where those newsletter styles will, HTML heavy newsletters will still convert way better. So it's up to you to figure that out. Um, but broadly speaking, plain text looking emails, single column, not with sidebars. Um, and, and I think the, the best way this is illustrated is the fact that two-thirds of email, you remember the stat that I mentioned earlier, two-thirds of email are now viewed on mobile, so on your phone or on your tablet. And naturally, if you've got an HTML-heavy email, it probably is not going to show up very well you know, on a screen this big. So plain text, uh, keeping it short, keeping it simple, keeping it personable, generally is known to convert better. Um, segment, if you can, sending different emails to different groups of customers, again, as I mentioned earlier, based on tags, based on preferences, tend to convert better. 14% uh, more opens than if it's not segmented. So if I like red shirts and you send me an, an email about red shirts, I'm 14% more likely to, to click through and check out the red shirts, which, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, but not only is it 14% um, more opens, but 100% more click-throughs. Again, because you're, you're showing me exactly the products that I want, makes a big difference. Uh, personalizing them, it, it's such a silly little trick, but that dear Corey, instead of dear sir, or dear ma'am, or hey you, um, uh, leads to 5% more email opens. Shouldn't work. We all know that it's automated. I know it, we all know that they don't actually know me by name, but it works. Uh, here's another uh, subjective tip and trick, but uh, I've seen it work uh, a lot and a lot more lately. It is asking for engagement, and I don't mean sales. I don't mean asking them to buy, but asking customers to weigh in, including things like polls or just asking your customers, hey, we're thinking about carrying more red shirts, what do you think? And it's amazing how much you'll get people writing in and going, oh, I hate red, stop carrying red shirts. Or people going, yes, more red shirts, only red shirts. Um, people like to share their opinions on the internet. I don't know if you guys have discovered that yet. But... And then of course, the caveat for all of this is it depends on your market, right? It depends on what you're trying to get out of, uh, of your email marketing efforts. So measure and experiment. Everything I tell you today is absolutely 100% true except for when it's not. So it's up to you to figure out where I'm lying. So the last thing I want to talk about is intent. Because this was, subjectively, the biggest mistake that I made for a long time as I've been learning email marketing um, since the late 90s is early on everybody said you need a mailing list. So I got a mailing list that makes sense. So you got to send out a newsletter once a month. So I sent out a newsletter once a month. And I've done this for a number of businesses, number of businesses over the last, goodness, 20 years. And what it comes down to is Intent. What is it that you want to get out of your email marketing and what is it you want your customers to get out of you marketing to them? And obviously the easy answer is sales. If you sell widgets, you want to sell them widgets. But 
a lot of the time, high pressure sales don't work. So that it's the, do you want more engagement? Do you want your customers to weigh in? Uh, for me, it's been promoting a sense of ownership. And so like I said, the, the trick, it's not really a trick, the technique that I like using the most now is engagement. Most of the newsletters that I send out now, I will very intentionally include a couple of screenshots and say, we're thinking about building feature A or feature B, which one do you want? Bless you. And it's amazing how much engagement I'll get. And for me, I know that that way I'm building a product that my customers want. And two, they have a sense of ownership in my product, and so again, it, they're more likely to buy, which is what I ultimately want them to do. But since I can't just say, buy my thing, and, or at least I can, but they won't do what I tell them, um, how do I want to get there? So I want to leave you with the underlying, or maybe it's over, the meta concept of you know, what is your intent I've given you the, hopefully, sort of a technical overview of how you can do email marketing. What is it you want to get out of it? So that's the basics of making the most of your mailing list. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions, concerns, accusations, denials. Lori, I wonder if you would say a little bit about the difference or the way that they might be complementary, uh, writing a blog and an e-newsletter, which might in some ways have the same kind of content. Can you comment on that? Sure. Uh, so the question was, what is, what are the advantages and disadvantages perhaps of writing blog posts versus including content in an uh, email newsletter, and then where, where do they overlap? Is that right? Um, one, the obvious easy caveat or disclaimer is it's going to depend on your audience. Are they more likely to come to your website um, or do they want you to come to them? Um, but I would err, err, I would skew towards trying to get into people's inboxes. Um, because, again, if it lands in their inbox, you're way more likely to, to get eyeballs on it or at least to have them see a subject line and maybe choose not to read it different from if it's on your blog, if it's on your website, you've got to somehow get them to you, get them back to you. Um, and so, you know, you coming to them, I think is uh, probably going to be, uh, work better. Um, but again, it, it, it kind of depends. Question in the back? Um, I, it's being filmed and recorded, so yes. Uh, so the question was, will the presentation be online? So the, let me see if I can summarize. Uh, with a client who is spending a lot of time doing Facebook marketing, uh, where they don't necessarily know who their customers are, uh, how can we sell them the benefits of email marketing? And, and I would say not, it's, it, not even instead, but in addition to, I would imagine. Um, so there are a couple of things. One of the things that occurs to me now that I probably should have included in my presentation and forgot, so um, the next time I give this talk, I will include it. Um, but you are the lucky individuals who uh, will benefit from a great question and be remembering right now, um, is that a lot of us hesitate to include content in well, duplicate content. And this actually goes back to your question of, um, you know, if I write it in a blog post, should I also put it in your newsletter? Absolutely. Um, don't assume, it's kind of like sending the same tweet 
a few times, like you can't send it every 30 seconds, but there's no harm in sending the same tweet a few times over a period of time. Um, don't assume that uh, people will have seen the content, and then also uh, most of us assume that people will even realize that they've seen the content before, uh, and even more so will get annoyed that they've seen the content before, uh, and uh, I don't, I, my recollection is a study showed that that was not true. Um, so in this case, I think that them, your client sending content, putting content on Facebook, marketing to people on Facebook um, is not bad, but I think it, to me it would be a fairly easy sell to say, look, yes, you, you're reaching people, I'm sure you're reaching people, um, but because of segmentation, because of um, getting into their inbox and marketing directly to them and just how strong segmentation um, and the targeted email marketing can be, it's not bad that you're casting this wide net on Facebook, but, but the intent would be pushing them further down the funnel and getting them to sign on to the newsletter because there are huge advantages of, uh, of marketing, of getting into their inbox, of being able of knowing who their name is, of being able to tag them based on the pages on the websites that they visited, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, you're, I don't know, getting, if you're trying to whisper in their ear, let's say, another terrible analogy, um, you're getting closer and closer to their ear, basically. So the, um, uh, the question is, what is the, a, a good or decent rate of engagement, I guess, for across an entire list? Um, a couple of thoughts there. One is it's, it, it'll ebb and flow over time. Two, um, the, the only stat that I know of is based on specific, like, the engagement of emails. And, it, and then it really comes down to content, too, and how engaged your customer is. So it's kind of hard to answer. Um, my gut tells me that it's eight to twenty-five percent. Um, where it's, I'm getting thumbs up. Am I right? Woohoo! Lucky guess. No, but um, for me and my own mailing list, I look for eight to ten percent because that's that's what I've seen and what and the spikes that I've seen with with the best performing content that I've been able to figure out. Um, that's my generally my peak, so I'm looking for that or better. Um, so you're doing trial. Right, yes, I'm doing my own trial and error. Um, I'm focusing more on content, less so than a delivery time, because there have been, historically, there have been reports that have come out that said, you know, Tuesday at 8 a.m., but then everybody sends it Tuesday at 8 a.m., and the whole thing's blown out of the water, so, um, and I know a lot of, well, so, so let, me, let me say two things. One, from my experience and my reading, the best thing is consistency. It doesn't necessarily matter the time of day or whatever. The best thing you can do is be consistent so that your readers, it's just like blogging, you want your readers to anticipate something from you. So whether that's every Tuesday or once a month or whatever it is, but be consistent. Um, and the other thing about engagement is um, all of the better email tools, and I think and I'm realizing that this should be on the slide, so, um, there will be another revision of this. Um, another tool that you want to make sure, a feature that you want to make sure that your email tool has is list culling, I think would be the way to put it. So every once in a while going in and there's a button you can click that will basically say, this group of users have never ever opened an email, maybe it's time to sunset them, let them, you know, unsubscribe them automatically. Or, ideally, here's an opportunity to email all of those people and say, hey, I noticed you haven't engaged with my mailing list for a while. Is your email address active? Is there something else I can talk about? Do you hate me personally? Are you a competitor and you're just spying on? You know, whatever it might be. Um, but that's, that's another segment to look at. Anti-segment. Yes, sir? So 
So what is the most sophisticated way, a not intrusive, creepy, big brother, stalkery, spammy sort of way to get email addresses, specifically from Facebook? From Facebook pages. Well, good for you for having a big following on Facebook, first of all. Um, second of all, I, there's no harm in asking. If you're putting out good content, uh, there's no harm in asking. End every Facebook post with a call to action. Hey, if you want more great content like this, join my mailing list. Um, there's also widgets and apps and all sorts of little ways to actually get that form right built into the Facebook page. Um, but again, the, in the name of, of being personable, I don't think there's any harm in asking consistently, encouraging people often to join your mailing list, and then obviously you have to deliver on that promise, actually give them good content. Um, but I, I would just be straightforward about it. I don't, I don't know that there's any tip or trick. Any quick comments on how to move one list to another tool provider or whatever? Um, quick comments on moving people. Again, the, the better tools all have uh, export functions, features. In terms of, okay, they, they, there's a spam feature where they don't let you put in so many records. Oh, gotcha. Um, but again, most of them, at this point, there's, there's a surprising amount going on behind the scenes at a lot of these email providers where they've got their own whitelists, IP, you know, whitelisting and, and spam checks and all that stuff. Also, your list and you online have reputations, whether you know about it or not. Um, that are, you know, there's a number assigned to you whether you <laughs> like that concept or not. Um, hopefully most of it's kept private or internal, but it's true. And so the truth is, is, is I wouldn't be, I don't, I, don't, I don't know this factually, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if I was moving from MailChimp to ActiveCampaign, if ActiveCampaign didn't have some way to look at my reputation on MailChimp and say, you know, yes, this person's legit, or at least he's not totally evil. Um, and so let him import the email addresses, that kind of thing. One last question, anybody? Sir? Um, so you're seeing, are you, you're saying in, in the emails that you're receiving, you're starting to see more animation, more animated GIFs, more videos, that kind of thing. Um, I think that's absolutely true. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I'm seeing some of it as well. Uh, again, in the context of it might be the only content or it might be laid out in a fairly simple way. We're not talking about a page of, of videos, but... Um, yeah, I, anything that's going to engage your users. And so if, if they're drawn to cute little animations or uh, if you can get your point across better with a, essentially a short video in the form of a GIF, um, I, I think that that's, you know, it's compelling. It's, it's come, all comes down to compelling content, whatever format that's in. I'm Corey Moss. Uh, again, if you want to get in touch, email me, uh, find me on Twitter. Thanks very much.